Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. Today I want to talk about arrow clocking. The act of the arrow leaving the bow and rotating or clocking on its own in a particular direction and should you match the fletching of your arrow to match that natural clocking rotation. So let's talk about what I mean by arrow clocking if you've never heard of it before. You take a bare shaft and you shoot it out of your bow at a very short distance, three to four feet away from the target. You want to make sure you have ample clearance from your bow to the target but you want to catch that arrow really quickly coming out of the bow and you want to see because our knock is of course oriented so the string would come down through vertically which way that knock is twisted does it naturally want to twist to the left and does it naturally want to twist to the right all of your arrows will fire out of your bow going one way or the other although 90 plus percent of them they're going to go counterclockwise or to the left therefore you would probably want a left helical or a left offset and if they were to clock to the right they would want a right helical or right offset but like I said 90 plus percent of the time they're gonna want to clock to the left and let's talk about why and if I really care about it in my tuning process because I fletch all of my arrows with a right helical and a pretty strong one even though all of my bows that I've ever shot have shot with a counterclockwise or a left helical clocking naturally from that bare shaft so why does this clocking happen well it happens because the string is imparting an angle because of the center serving it's imparting an angle angle onto the knock. So to the naked eye, we put the string straight down the groove of the knock and it pushes it straight. But that center serving is not actually served as straight. It's served on an angle. So let's zoom the camera in onto an arrow that I've served up and let's see what that angle actually looks like when you blow it up at a much larger scale. So as you can see here, I've taken this bare shaft arrow and I've served it up pretend center serving with a little bit of D-loop neon green so we can see it really easily. And you notice I served from bottom to top. So this would be like serving a string from the bottom cam to the top cam, which is pretty typical in the industry, you'll notice that all of these servings, even though they are put on straight, they are all at an angle. And when we go to cinch down with the back serving on the back side, it pulls them all up at this angle. So imagine this at a very, very, very finite, very minute difference. When you push this into a knock, you can't really actually see it until it actually fires from the bow. When it then goes and fires from the bow, it's going to want to twist that knock. It's going to want to push it so it's in line with these center servings. Now at first glance here it looks like when that string would push on the knock it would want to level it out this way but remember we're not leveling out the string we're leveling out the arrow that would be clipped onto this and gravity is going to win so it's going to fall to the left hand side it's going to fall this way it's going to push down at an angle more like this on that arrow on that knock it's going to cause a counterclockwise or to the left it's going to push that arrow to start clocking to the left naturally. So I know it's not the world's greatest example so let's actually shoot a bear shaft and see how it clocks out of my bow I already know it's going to go counterclockwise it's going to start clocking to the left and I actually brought two bows with me totally different my wife's and my own and they're both still going to clock to the left I'm going to show you the bowstring and the center serving and show you why this is going to happen for 90 plus percent of the bowstrings that I see mass produced on the market today so we have an elite cure and an elite spirit one with winner's choice custom strings and one with Cedar Hill archery strings, very different price points, very different builds, but they are still twisted and served exactly the same in terms of their direction. Totally different manufacturers, totally different locations, but the build idea is still the same. And that's going to give us that left clock or that counterclockwise or left offset twist right out of this bear shaft coming right out of the bow. So first up is the cure with the bear shaft. I literally have the target here on the ground about three feet away from me. I'm going to take a shot, pick up the spirit, do the exact same shot with my second bear shaft. Same type of arrow, totally different bow and setup, totally different. Really short draw length. We're going to shoot this into the target and see what kind of clock we have. All right, so here's the clocking I'm talking about. On the left, we have the shot from the Cure, and on the right, we have the shot from the Spear. And you can see this knock should be oriented perfectly up and down if this arrow was not clocking. But we can see from this little knock indexer over here on the left-hand side of the knock, we can see that it has started to twist this way in that counterclockwise. The same thing is true over here of the Cure. We can see the knock is no longer going to be perfectly vertical up and down. It has twisted, and it is now facing this way just slightly to the left with the knock indexer over here. So I can see even though both these bows are very different, 
two totally different string manufacturers, I can see that they would both clock their arrows naturally to the left if I just shot bare shafts. So why are we seeing this left clocking? Nearly everybody that I know uses a right helical. Why are the strings built exactly this way and why are they causing this left clock even if we don't want to shoot that left helical or that left offset? So anecdotally, and this is just what makes sense to me, I don't build strings. I don't personally know anybody that does, but here's how a string in particular is built if you don't know. It's endless loops of the same material and then the serving is just held on there with friction. There are no knots in a bowstring. So once they get those loops done together and they separate the two colors, and we'll get a close up here of this really nice silver and purple on my wife's bow, they once they get that all figured out, they then twist the string to shorten it to make it the appropriate length, right? So when you twist up anything, you make it shorter. When you add knots, you make it shorter. And we don't want to be adding knots. In this case, we're just adding the twist. And when they twist it up, it just makes sense mentally to the human brain, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So if you have this bow, imagine it was sitting in the string jig, bottom cam over here, top cam over here. Only one part of the string jig has the motor that twists. The other one is a fixed peg and the other one actually has a hook that can go and spin to twist up the string. And it would just make sense that it would be righty tighty. So if you have this fix and this one over here, you twist to the right to tighten or to shorten the string. Now it'll still shorten if you go the other direction, but at least the way the human brain works to me anyway, it would make more sense if this was twisted this direction to allow that string to to get shorter in that righty tighty format. So if all string manufacturers are clocking to the left, doesn't it make sense for us then to fletch all of our arrows to the left? It does if you're a professional archer, but for me and for the vast majority of you at home, we're not accurate enough to know the difference. And I fletched up both off camera in years past, and I've seen no accuracy change in terms of how tight or loose my groups are, depending if my arrow is clocking to the left and I fletch it to the right, or clocking to the right and I fletch it to the left. It comes down to the shooter more than the string. And particularly for us bow hunters at 20, 30, and 40 yards, we're not worried about that tight or that much accuracy. So why do I fletch everything with right helical and usually a pretty strong right helical? Why do I do that even though I know that my bowstring is going to naturally push my arrows to go counterclockwise or with a left helical? Well the big reason is this one. When you're shooting an arrow down range and it impacts the target, if it is going counterclockwise, it's spinning this way, it's spinning to the left, when this point impacts the target, the arrow behind it is still spinning and it's going to loosen the point in side of the target and you'll get this. That nice happy rattle. But if it's going the other direction and it's righty tighty and it's twisting the point into the shaft and it's doing that throughout the life of the target, the inside of the target, it doesn't loosen up. I don't get that rattling. Now also when it comes to bow hunting, to me it doesn't make any sense. When I put a fixed blade broadhead or even a big cut mechanical on here, when that impacts the target and that starts twisting with the arrow behind it, and particularly if it's a large cut mechanical and it's got a lot of surface area, it doesn't make any sense that I want to push that in and then have the arrow behind it twist the opposite direction. This broadhead is going to encounter a lot and it's going to now start unscrewing from the back end of the arrow. That to me just sounds like a huge energy dump that I don't want to have. I want my arrows to hit, impart, and continue their energy all in the same plane and in the same direction. Now I don't have any math to back that up if that's actually true or not, but with a screw-on broadhead I would rather it be twisting with my arrow than being stuck in the arrow than trying to unscrew itself from the back end forward. Now if you're a competitive target shooter and you use glue and points, or if you're like me you shoot in the bow hunter class and you have target specific arrows and you glue your field points with hot melt into your inserts, yeah, go ahead, shoot left helical, man. Go for bro, get as much accuracy out of your arrow as you can. But even then, I still just don't worry about it. At indoor, I'm shooting with the bow hunter class at 20 yards. The inaccuracies are my problem, not the arrows. If I'm shooting in the woods, I'm getting that 20, 30 yard distance. I have not had any issues grouping at my minimum angle of distance, right? So, you know, 10 yards, one inch, 20 yards, two inch, 
inch, 30 yards, three inch, so on and so forth. I've never had that problem shooting an arrow that's fletched incorrectly, going the opposite direction of that clocked arrow. So personally, I wouldn't sweat it. I wouldn't worry about it. Fletch the arrows any way you want. Get out, hit the range, and enjoy the sport of archery. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions on arrow clocking, arrow tuning, how I fletch arrows, or anything else that pertains to the sport of archery, follow the links in the description below. Hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, my email's even down there, and of course, you can always leave a comment here on YouTube. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation, and we'll get to see you next time.